hi everyone welcome back here in this new video tutorial today we are going to learn how to create a dynamic invoicing system in microsoft excel here in the screen you can see a invoice that is already prepared first of all i will explain the features of this invoicing system then i will start with the process of making this so here i have four different worksheets first is the invoice template where we can create our invoice the second is item detail sheet here you need to prepare the details of the item like uh, item description invoicing rate discount percentage if any and the tax percentage then the third sheet is customer detail sheet where there is a detail of the customer like name of the customer address pan number credit side you can add more information if you require the next one is stock and sales sheet here we have to maintain the stock like if you are going to make this for month on month basis then here quantity of stock you have in your warehouse at the beginning of the month should be kept here in the opening stock and in the receipt we have to put the quantity that we receive in our warehouse if you are a manufacturing company then the manufactured quantity we need to put here in the receipt in the sales till date the system will automatically put the detail of the invoice here in the sales till date when you raise a new invoice the quantity of that invoice will automatically add here so that the sales will update the next one is the balance stock which is calculated by subtracting the sales from opening stock plus receipt and here in the quantity from invoice a formula is used to capture the quantity of the current invoice so these are the four sheet we have now let's go to the invoice sheet and here you have two button one button is to save the invoice and one button is to cancel the invoice after preparing the invoice you have to simply click on save invoice then the pdf copy of the invoice will be saved in the computers disk drive and if you do some mistake in the invoice then you can simply click on the cancel so that the input value will be cancelled and here this invoice number is also dynamic when you create a new invoice this invoice number will be automatically increased by one like after saving the invoice number two invoice number three will auto appear and if you go down here the numeric value of the invoice will be converted into the code format and this is in us dollar format but you can change this codes to your own currency which i will explain later how to do and here let me create a invoice in the customer name there is a drop down where i can choose from different customer here i am choosing valley trade link for example when I choose the Bally Trade link, the address PAN number will automatically appear here and also the due date will auto appear. Here the invoice date and the due date is same because Bally Trade link does not have any credit side. Here you see that's why the due date is same with the invoice date. But if I take here a different customer, then you see the due date will auto calculate and the invoice date will be auto given by the today function when you open this file tomorrow then this date will automatically update now let's create an invoice here for the abc stores here in the item description you can select the item name from the drop down and when you select the item name the rate discount tax everything will auto calculate here only we have to choose the item name and the quantity here if i put 12 unit as a quantity here you have the net amount of the invoice and here you can also see the balance stock of this item here we have the balance stock of 18 unit and here we have 12 unit used that's why the order is accepted but if you try to enter here the quantity that is greater than balance stock then excel will stop the entry like here if i try to enter 20 unit then here you see there is a error message that is insufficient stock the quantity entered is insufficient please reduce or cancel the order this way 
it will throw a message so now you have to click and retry and reduce the order that is available here if i put it in then it is accepted so the stock is also dynamically checked while creating the invoice now if you go down here you see the numeric value is converted into code format 1088 us dollar and 10 cent so everything here in this system is dynamic here i am going to choose one more product like uh, gh then here i'll put the quantity 24 unit now everything gets calculated after making the invoice then here you have to click on the save invoice button when you click on this then here you see the invoice is saved as a pdf here you have the pdf of the invoice which is saved in the computer's disk drive if i go here in the desktop there is a folder invoice backup where i have the saved invoice that is invoice number two here you see this is the pdf copy you can access this invoice anytime in future here you have the saved copy of the invoice after saving the invoice in pdf then here you see the previous invoice record is automatically deleted now it is ready for the another invoice here invoice number three is auto given and if you select the quantity here the serial number is also dynamic when a quantity is added the serial number is automatically appearing and after creating this invoice if you have to cancel this if you don't need to raise this invoice to the customer then you can simply click on the cancel button then here you see the record of the previous invoice will be cancelled without saving so this is the feature of the invoice system now let's start with the process of how to create this and to create this i am going to close this template and i will open a blank format so here i am going to this invoice folder and here i have a blank format where i'll show you how to use formulas and how to create this template this blank format of the invoice you can download from the video description below and you can also download the complete format with the formulas used and here first of all let's understand the basic of this formatting to create this company name address and uh, pan number i have used the text box option here this is a text box you can insert the text box here by going to insert tab then here you have option to insert the text box draw the text box and here you can put the name of the company address pan number and you can increase the font size by going to home tab and here you have a font option so this is done by using text box then here i have put the customer name address and pan number here i have put invoice invoice date and due date below this in the row number 10 there is the header of the invoice that is serial number item description quantity rate discount discount amount tax percent tax amount and net amount this header you can change according to your requirement then i have taken some row here to enter the item and the quantity while putting the number of row here you have to take care whether this invoice fits in one single page or not because it is better to put one invoice in one single page then below it make this grand total amount where the grand total amount of the invoice will be calculated and here create a field for displaying the amount to odds after making this format here then in the item details you have to prepare the detail of the item which is used for invoice like the invoice rate discount and tax percentage similarly for customer also you have to put the detail of the customer which will be used in the invoice finally in the next sheet you have to prepare a format for keeping the record of the stock and sales where there is item name column opening stock column receipt sales till date balance stock and beside the balance stock here you have to put quantity from invoice this will be created by using formula now let's learn how to use formula here in this template because 
the formula is the important part here to display the customer name here in this cell we have to use the data validation so click on the customer name cell then go to data tab click on this data validation option then here in the drop down choose list and here in the source of the list click on the customer details sheet then select the name of the customer and while selecting the name of the customer take some more row because when you add new customer here then it will appear in the list now click ok and here you see the drop down is created from this you can choose the name of the customer like this and here to display the address and pan number use the vlookup function press equal to type vlookup bracket open in the lookup value click on the customer name here comma in the table array click on customer details sheet select this whole table then give a comma in the column index number provide the column number 2 because address is on the second column 2 comma in the range lookup choose exact match by double clicking then close the bracket formula is complete press enter and here you see the vlookup has given the address of the customer and this is dynamic when you change the customer name here then the address will also change but here if you delete the customer name the na error will be given if you want to eliminate this error you can combine the if error function with the vlookup so here double click on the formula go at the beginning of the formula then combine if error open bracket go to the end of the formula give a comma then type double quotations two times close bracket press enter now if the customer name is here in this cell then the address will be displayed otherwise address will be invisible or the na error will be invisible so repeat the same vlookup function here in the pan number also now the pan number is also dynamic when you change the customer name this will auto change and here in the invoice number first of all you need to put one because the first invoice will be invoice number one later we will make it dynamic by using the vva code in the invoice date put the today function press equal to then type today bracket open bracket close press enter now this is also dynamic when you open this invoice system in another day this date will auto change to the current date in the due date of the invoice we have to again use the vlookup function press equal to here then click on the invoice date plus then we have to add the credit side given to this customer which we have to capture from this customer details sheet by using vlookup so here type vlookup bracket open in the lookup value click on customer name comma in the table array click on customer details sheet select this table then credit side is on the fourth column so give a comma and in the column index number provide four here comma in the range lookup double click on exact match close bracket press enter and here too if you delete customer name the na error will be given so to remove the na error combine the if error function by going at the beginning type if error bracket open go to the end give a comma double quotation close bracket press enter and now if there is no customer then this will not be given similarly here in the serial number column to automate this serial number we have to use the sequence plus count a function press equal to then type sequence function choose this by double clicking then here combine the count a function open bracket now in the value one of the count a function select this item range like this way till here then close the count a function close the sequence function then press enter and now the serial number will be dynamic when you choose items here then it will start appearing and uh, if you don't have the sequence function available then you have to choose a different method the different method i will put in the video description below 
now here to display the item description we have to use the data validation again as we did here in the customer name so select the range of item description then go to data tab click on data validation choose list from the drop down then here in the source click on it then go to item details sheet then select the item name range and here too while selecting the range take some more row because when new item is added it will appear in the list then click ok and here you have the item name list you can choose the name of the item from here and when you choose the item here you see the serial number is now automatically generated and this quantity column should be filled manually because every invoice has a different quantity in this rate column we have to now use the vlookup function again so press equal to then type vlookup bracket open in the lookup value click on the item name comma in the table array go to item details sheet select this table select the whole table then give a comma in the column index number the invoice rate is given on the second column of the table that's why i put here two comma then choose exact match close the bracket then press enter and here you see the rate is now given but here if you delete the item name it will give the na error to remove this na error let's combine the if function here in this formula simply double click go at the beginning of the formula then here combine if function if open the bracket now in the logical test of the if function click on this item description cell is equal to then type double quotation two times it means that if the item description cell is blank then give a comma in this case we have to display blank in the rate so here again type double quotation two times then give a comma in the value if false this formula will work now go to the end then close a the bracket press enter and here if you delete the item name then there will be nothing in the rate but when you choose the item then the rate will be displayed so the if function is used here to display blank if the item is blank and display the calculation if there is some item and if you want to learn more on this if function you can go in the video description and learn because if is one of the very useful function in excel and here now you can drag the same formula down till the last row of the item description here where you see when there is item the rate is calculated when there is no any item the rate is not calculated the same way we have to use here the formula for discount percentage now here in the discount amount the formula will be press equal to use the if function bracket open in the logical test click on this item description equal to blank double quotation represents blank in the formula comma in the value if true double quotation two times again comma in the value if false we have to use this formula to calculate the discount amount that is the quantity multiplied with the rate multiplied with the discount percentage so here click on the quantity multiplied with rate then again multiplied with the discount percentage which is on the e11 cell so here directly type e11 because the cell is not clickable because of the formula then close the bracket press enter and here now the discount amount will be calculated and now drag this formula till the last row here and when you put the quantity here then the discount amount gets calculated similarly to get the tax percentage here use the same formula to calculate the net amount of invoice use this formula press equal to type the if function open bracket in the logical test click on the item description equal to blank comma in the value if true display blank comma in the value if false the formula will be open a bracket 
then multiply this quantity with the rate close bracket minus then subtract the discount amount plus then add the tax amount so click on tax amount this formula will give the net amount of the invoice close the bracket and press enter and here you see this is the net amount of the invoice go here in the fill handle then drag the formula till the last row this calculates the net amount of the invoice here in the grand total amount of the invoice use sum formula press equals scum sum open bracket then select this range of the net amount close bracket press enter this will give the grand total amount of the invoice and here in the invoice amount in odds we have to create a custom function to convert the numeric currency value to code format which we will learn later now to display the balance stock here beside the invoice we have to use this formula press equal to type if error function open bracket then combine vlookup open bracket in the lookup value of the vlookup click on the item name comma then in the table array go to the stock and sell sheet then select this table then give a comma in the column index number provide 1 2 3 4 5 because balance stock is on the fifth column so put 5 here comma in the range lookup choose exact match then close bracket give a comma for value if error of the if error function type 0 then close bracket press enter and here you see the balance stock for the item that is select here will be given go here in the fill handle click on it then drag it down now the stock will be displayed when we choose the item here here you see the stock detail is given after this in the item detail sheet we don't need to do any calculation in the customer detail also there is no any calculation needed and here in the stock and sales sheet we have to do some calculation here to display the balance stock the formula will be simple click on the sale press equal to click on opening stock plus the receipt minus the sales this will give the balance stock now just drag this formula down and here you have the balance stock and here in this sale we have to display the quantity from the invoice because every single invoice quantity we have to transfer here in the sales till date column that's why here to display the quantity from invoice again use the vlookup press equal to here also combine if error then vlookup in the lookup value click on the item name here comma in the table array go to invoice sheet and here select from item description column to the quantity then select till here item description and quantity column give a comma in the column index number provide 2 because the quantity is on the second column of the selection then again give a comma choose exact match by double clicking then close bracket and give a comma for value if error put 0 then close bracket press enter and here you have the quantity from invoice now drag this down then here you have the quantity of the invoice like currently the invoice has item a b 12 unit that's why it has given here if i change this to 18 unit then it will auto change here 18 this will be transferred here in the sales till date when we save the invoice now to create these buttons for save invoice and cancel invoice just use the shape option by going to insert then here you have an option to insert the shape that is in the illustration category click on shape then here you can draw a shape for save invoice and cancel invoice in this way you can draw the shape you can change the color by going here in the shape format tab and here you have the color option and here to add the text simply double click then here you can add the text value this way we create a button the same way create the cancel invoice button here now we have completed with the formula and formatting part now we have the automation part remaining 
to automate we have to use the visual basic for application we have to use the code here to automate the process of saving the invoice cancelling the invoice and incrementing the invoice number by one every time when we save a new invoice for this i have a code written in this notepad file this vva code contains of the codes that will automate the process of transferring the quantity of the current invoice to sales column and it will also used for saving the invoice as pdf and also for clearing the invoice if we click on the cancel button first of all let me explain the function of the code in our system here this part of code is transferring the current detail of the invoice or current quantity of the invoice to the sales column like if you go here in the format this is the detail of the current invoice which we need to transfer here in the sales till date so if you notice here in the code there is h4 to h16 cell range is given in your system if the range is different then you have to update the range accordingly like here in my case the range is from h4 to h16 so this is used in the vva code but while you are making the template from beginning then this range might differ so in this case you have to update this range here in the code similarly this range e4 select means i am selecting this range to paste the value and add so here if this cell reference is different in your case you have to update this cell reference in the code then this part of the code is saving the file as a pdf copy and it is clearing the detail of the previous invoice and here the modification needed is this range like a1 to i34 is selected here if you go in the template in the invoice sheet our invoice contains from cell a1 till the i34 cell here till here our invoice is given i34 that's why the the range is taken in the code if your invoice template has a different cell range here for the invoice then you have to update it here in this range and here you have to modify this also like here you see the folder address is given this is the folder address to save the invoice and this also should be updated like here if in your desktop if you create a folder for saving the invoice here i am giving invoice then you have to open this folder then click on the folder address bar then you have to copy this address copy then you have to go to the code and update this part here you have to paste your folder address by selecting till here this part should be modified then the next thing you need to modify here is this cell reference because this i3 cell is the cell where there is invoice number here you see in the i3 cell invoice number is given if in your template there is the invoice number in i2 cell then you have to make it i2 so this should be modified the next modification needed is this range like c6 to f6 which is the customer name range from c6 to f6 this you need to check whether your customer name is on this range or not if you have the customer name in different cell range then you have to update this also the cell reference should be updated this range is for clearing the item name and quantity this b11 to c23 means the cell where there is item and quantity after saving the invoice we have to clear this range that's why this code is written clear contents means we are clearing this range value so this cell address should be modified according to your template and here the last code is to automate the invoice number like the invoice number is on the i3 cell so this code is used to increase the invoice number by one every time a new invoice is created so also modify this if your invoice number is in a different cell so this part will auto transfer the quantity of invoice to sales column and 
save and clear the invoice now this second part of the code is used for cancelling the invoice this is for cancelling the invoice where there is you can see where the clear invoice is given as subject and here also you need to modify this sale range if in your template there is the customer name and item name quantity name in different sale reference and here you also need to update the seat name like here i have written stock and sales seat if your template has a different name then this name also should be updated every time you see the seat name here like in my template seat one contains the invoice template if your template is in a different seat then you have to update the seat number accordingly here so after doing modification here then you can copy the code then install it in your excel if you are using the template that i have provided in the link below then you don't need to do any modification in the code but if you are developing a template from scratch then there might be change in the cell reference so you have to update accordingly now copy this entire code by selecting copy this then open microsoft excel and here click on developer click on visual basic and uh, click on insert tab module and here paste the copied code by right clicking then click on paste now close this bba editor now to assign the code here in these buttons you have to right click on the button then click on assign macro and here you see the clear invoice and save invoice code is given for save invoice select the save invoice code then click ok for cancel invoice right click assign macro and choose the clear invoice code click ok now the code are assigned to the button now if you click on save invoice the invoice will be saved in the folder and when you click on cancel invoice the invoice will be cancelled here if i click on save invoice here you see what is happening is the invoice is saved as a pdf copy in the disk drive here in my desktop folder the invoice is saved in the invoice backup folder here you have the invoice number one that is just created similarly if you go to the stock and sales sheet the detail of the previous invoice is added here in the sales till date now let me create a new invoice here i'll take the customer name then i'll choose the item from here in the quantity i am putting 12 unit now in this case when you go down here the invoice amount in code is not displaying and to display this we have to again install a new function in excel and to install the number two currency code format you have to use another VBA code that is given here in this notepad file i will put this notepad file in the video description below you can download it from there copy this code entire code you can also press ctrl a to select all then copy this then go here in the excel then go to visual basic then again click on insert module and here paste the code now this code will convert the numeric value of the currency to the old format by default this code is for us dollar and cent format you can modify this code for your own currency unit name and sub unit name the modification you need to do here is you have to find this spell usd and replace this with your own currency name like if your currency name is rupees then make it spell rupees this spell usd you can also see in other line of code you have to find it where there is spell usd written and replace this by your currency the next replacement needed is you have to replace the us dollar by your own currency name like rupees for example and the cent by your sub unit name like paisa for example so after making all the replacement here in the cent and us dollar then the code will be for your own currency now close the bva editor 
and here in the invoice amount in ODE use this function press equal to type the spell UST function after making the replacement in the code then you will see the function name according to your own currency double click on the function then click on this number close the bracket press enter and here you have the conversion of the number to ODE so after doing all this now here we have one very important thing remaining that is to validate the quantity with the balance stock because here if I put the quantity that is greater than the balance stock then it will accept like here if I put 300 then it is not giving any error message or it is not blocking the entry so this is very important because we cannot raise invoice that is greater than balance stock so here to create the validation we have to use the data validation again so here select this quantity range this way then click on data tab click on data validation then here choose the custom option and here in the formula bar we have to write this formula press equal to then put the first cell reference for the quantity that is c11 cell so here type c11 this should be less than or equal to so put here less than equal to symbol then give the first cell reference of the balance stock here that is the k11 cell so here type k11 now before c put the dollar symbol and before column k put the dollar symbol now this formula will check whether the entered quantity is less than balance stock or not if it is not less than balance stock then we have to reject the entry so here after writing this go to the error alert choose the stop alert from here by default it is selected and in the title put stock out put the exclamation marks then here in the error message this stock quantity is insufficient please reduce or cancel the order this message is just for example you can change this message according to your need now after setting up this message and putting the formula here click on ok now the validation is created if you try to enter the quantity that is greater than the stock available then here you will get a error message suppose here if i put 300 the error message is given stock out you cannot enter this quantity here you have to click on retry then change the quantity that is available if you put 243 then it is accepted similarly here in the next item also the available unit is 4 unit only but here if you try to enter 6 unit then it doesn't accept the order you have to make it that is available so this is the way of validating the quantity column now after doing all this our invoicing system is now ready and here if i add a more item like uh, i'm going to take item mn the quantity i'll put here 40 unit and if you want to save this invoice you can click on save invoice here you see the invoice is saved as a pdf copy that you can access anytime in future by going to this folder in the desktop just open it and here you have the invoice number 2 and sometime you need to cancel the invoice like here you started to create an invoice put some item and quantity then you need to cancel it in this case you can simply click on the cancel invoice and the detail of the invoice will be removed if you want to prepare the invoice again you can start with putting the item description quantity name of the customer etc then if you want to save it again click on the save invoice this will be automatically saved and the number of the invoice will auto change to invoice number 4 here and after creating all this we need to save this file as a macro enabled because we have used the macro and vva here so to save the file as macro enabled you have to go to file tab then go to save as 
and here in the type of the file choose excel macro enabled workbook then save the file by clicking on the save button so this is the way of creating this fully dynamic invoicing system in microsoft excel and uh, this much for today's video thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give me thumbs up by tapping on the like button and also subscribe to the channel to get similar kind of videos in future thank you very much for watching we will again meet on next video tutorial